Time, has it changed or have we changed? Has it, time, changed for our children, our grandchildren? Have we been taken into a mindless, mind-numbing abyss? I vividly and fondly remember our parents telling us when we were younger to enjoy our time because once we graduated high school, time would fly. Were they right? Escape the digital war. Listen to this information. Pretty shocking. According to the Nelson Total Audience Report from August 2020, we can see an increase of internet and digital use going off the charts from 2018 all the way to 2020. It looks like 12 hours and 21 minutes is the time spent on these devices. What is going on with our time? Where are we using our time? Are we using our time wisely? Well, according to this report, it looks like we are increasingly overwhelmed by the digital war and being really addicted to our devices. So let's look forward and see what's really going on. Hi, welcome to another point of view. Today, we're gonna to continue in our contest, escape from the digital war. So this is our challenge, we're setting forth a challenge and we're gonna give you some resources to back up what we're saying. Now the resources are taken from different sites, you know, just to kind of paint the big story. We're not advocating for each one of these sites, but they do have the graphs, they do have the information and therefore you can kind of look at it and say, is this really going on? And you can check into your own self and say, is this happening in our home? Is this happening with me? Um, am I being swept away by this digital avalanche of information that's coming at us? So the challenge is going to be kind of a day by day setting aside some time. You know, maybe you start off with putting your devices away at a certain time. Um, you think 830 at night maybe is the time that you're going to take all your blue screens away from you your ITVs, your TVs, your iPads, your iPhones, your Androids, your computers, and you're just going to turn everything off and add to your sleep, right? Or you're going to have freezes during meal times and you're going to say, everybody, here's a suggestion, get a box like this. Everybody in the household, this is dinner time, right? We are going to put all our devices inside here and they're going to be turned off. Right, so you might just have one that's an emergency. So like a family member is trying to contact you and nobody has a landline, right? And they can't rely on their landlines if they do have a landline. So you're gonna have maybe one emergency phone that's there just in case of emergency. It, emergencies, it has to be a real emergency. And you're just gonna start just kind of taping down on your time on screens and get back to your family, get back to reading the Bible, get back to the simplicity of playing board games, get back to spending more time, quality time with your children, get back to you and your wife or your husband spending more time together, more time with family members and friends and grandparents and those kind of things, spending more time outside, spending more time really truly engaging. And so you're going to disconnect to really connect with people. And so your devices won't be out when you're on walks, when you're in cafes, when you're in restaurants, when you're with other people, you, you know, your devices are off and you're, sp you're actually gonna be in charge of the time that you spend on the internet instead of being consumed by that blue light that, you know, drags you in. Some people are into gaming, some people are into just information and it's information overload, what is real, what is not will, real, what is a disinformation, what is misinformation, what is true. So we always go back to the plumb line. The word of God is true. So I'm gonna start off with this scripture. It says, Ephesians 5, 15 through 17, walk in wisdom. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Aren't they getting increasingly evil day by day? Therefore, do not be wise, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So it's gonna go back to that, the will of the Lord. Spending time in his word, spending time in your, your prayers, spending time with your husband and wife, spending time with your family, your friends, your surrounding friends, your, 
your parents, your grandparents, all these things you're going to give back your time, true time, real connected time. So we're starting off with a small minute to minute, hour to hour, then, you know, going to go really go a little faster and start going towards days where you're only on it for emergency use for work, um, for family. Then you're going to expand that out. Some people do a day freeze and that's just kind of what they do. I'm saying that every day you control the time that you're on the internet. You're on your screen time. You control that time. That way it's not overwhelming, over consuming you and it's an idol before the Lord and it's an idol before your family. And it's taking the time, the precious time that you can't you know, get back. So it's kind of like wake up simplify your life get back to the simplicity of scripture simplicity of spending time with the lord and simplicity of spending quality time with your family because time that's the one thing i remember my best friend said to me before she died uh breast cancer and then when she knew what that was um she was not going to live when she found out she said it was the wasted time that she regrets most so let's not waste the time that god has given us so right behind this, it's going to really talk to you and all the evidence and all the research and all this stuff that's going to be laid out for you as you're going to see that anxiety, depression is increased on these devices. You know, there is um, many people that I know that are dealing with uh, their children that are suicidal. They don't want to come out of their rooms. They're on, they're consumed by their devices. They're not truly connecting anymore. They're shutting down. Yes, we need sometimes for our work to be able to use these devices. Sometimes it's a quick research. Sometimes it's your phone. It's your access to, you know, to contacting people too. So, but let's use these devices wisely, not let them control you, but you set the time for them and more time given back. First God, your husband or your wife, right? Your family and then outward, right? And then you'll see that the time that you're actually getting back, you'll be so shocked because sometimes you're on the computer and three hours have passed and you're like, I haven't even had breakfast, I haven't washed my hair, you know, and then you're, you're consumed. Some of us are doing research and we're trying to investigate things and bring you information. So I have to track the time that I'm spending also doing these kind of things to present something that is as accurate as possible, not perfect, nothing is perfect, but to paint a big picture, but then also to know when to walk away and set these things down. So here we go. Here's the information to follow, and you'll see at the end how much time are you really spending with your children. Let me add on to that. Your husband, your wife, your family. How much time, quality time, are you spending with them? Start asking those questions. Now, according to an article written by the ACAP, written in February of 2020, on average, children ages 8 to 12 in the United States spend 4 to 6 hours a day watching or using screens, and teens spend up to 9 hours. While screens can entertain, teach, and keep children occupied, too much use may lead to problems. Increasingly, research has found that our reliance on technology is altering the way we think, act, and engage with other people. For example, an international 2019 study by the NICM Health Research Institute found that the internet can alter different areas of cognition, including our ability to recall parts of our memory. And a 2020 study funded by the U.S. National Institute of Child Health and Human Development found that screen time before bed affected the sleep of children with impulse control problems. A study published in 2020 with data from the Ontario Child Health Study showed that of a sample of over 2,000 adolescents, Ages 12 to 17 years old, children who reported four or more hours of passive screen time per day, in quotations, consumers screen time such as social media, not school or other engaging work, end quote, were three times more likely to meet the criteria for a major depression episode, generalized anxiety disorder, and social phobia. 
65% of all teenagers admit to having conversations with people they have no idea who it is in the real world. They only know this person digitally. 19% of those teenagers set up a face-to-face -face meeting with a stranger. Just let that sink in. Parent, if you're letting your 10, 11, or 12-year-old be on Instagram because you think your kid is more mature than the other kids their age, there's a great probability that your child might set up a face-to-face -face meeting with that stranger because they think the stranger is just like their buddy at school. The average parent spends 38.5 minutes per week in meaningful conversations with their children. Start asking those questions, and this is your challenge to set it down and start picking up your cross and following after Jesus, because he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through him. So redeem your time. Thank you for listening. I hope this inspires you to redeem and reset your time. Put your priorities back on the Word of God and your family. Thank you for listening. Here are some closing scriptures. Psalms 127.3 Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. 1 Peter 8, 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, sinking whom he may devour. 2 Timothy 2, 15 through 17. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness, and their message will spread like cancer. Second Timothy three sixteen through seventeen. All scripture is been given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete and thoroughly equipped for every good work.